my life on the X list. Hey there, what's up there, YouTube? It's me, the Diva X, and it is July 5th. Happy 4th of July, bitches. Um, I'm a day late, but that's all right. Yesterday was such a relaxing day, but anyways, that's not what this video is about. This video is about, um, I already have the title. It's going to be called HAV and Me. Um, so the reason I'm making this video is because um, I actually came across some comments about our videos um, that I produce with the Exotica Showgirls uh, royalty. And, um, <sighs> ooh, picking the words wisely, girls, because I'm, I, you know, I normally don't respond to stupid shit because I just have better things to do, but I felt like this one is a um, bigger issue because, um, j just to put the, make it clear. Um, and so, um, the comments w basically were just because, uh, the person was like anti watching the videos, anti sharing the videos, anti even I, whatever, anti the videos because they were from our show, the Exotica show. Um, and this person is a strong supporter of another show that happens at the same venue. And, um, I, you know, I don't care. It, 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 it's just like, I don't, um, well, the comment was basically that we are just trying to get views to our page, which I, <laughs> um, if I need, <laughs> ultimately it's not about views to the page. Um, and really I, so I wanted to come on here and, and share this little piece of hair, not share this little piece of hair, but share what. I really wanted to say, but that piece of hair is bothering me. Um, so the reason, I will, so, sorry, I, I need to use my words. I need to use my words. Cause it's, it's, I just get irritated and frustrated with the whole situation because those videos weren't about anything but just spread the message about testing and to use condoms. Um, and there's going to be more. So in the future, that's what they're going to be about. It's not about putting, getting more views to our page or, you know, it, it's not even about our promotion of our show. It's not, to me, it's not even about that. Like it, it, it that's like not even the, on the agenda. Um, that was not the intention of creating those videos. And I think that that, that's why it's so bothersome to me is that that wasn't the intention. And for people to think that that's the intention, um, it's bullshit. It's really bullshit. And so I, I wanted to come on here and tell you guys the intentions of my videos, of those videos and why I produce them, why I uh, support the cause, why I, um, um, continuously push, you know, HIV prevention, education, condom usage, all that, testing, all that. Um, so the story goes back some time um, before when I was in high school. Um, I had a, well, my best friend at the time, um, he actually um, had an encounter where he actually thought he had HIV. So back then, more than uh, some time ago, um, it's, you know, uh, the HIV was not necessarily a death sentence, but there was a story timeline of eight and a half to ten years of a person living with the virus um now i say back then because that has dramatically changed um for those of you who are not clear so i want to make sure i state the facts or state what it was and then make sure we're clear about what we're what i'm now saying um and so um when that happened it was a big he was my best friend and to think that your best friend may not be here in eight and a half to ten years and, and to see the pain that he was going through um, based off of, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that everyone's responsible for their own actions. Um, condoms were being pushed at the time, but I feel like, um, you know, there was no disclosure before the situation. So that's a whole nother situation. Um, disclosure meaning the person didn't tell him his status before and whatever. Um, regardless, it's, we're not, I'm not here to point blame, but at the point of the the point of the matter was the situation of having a friend going through that and and at the time it was you know um they had to send the test off so it was you know we had to get um the lab results in a, you know like i think it was about a little over a week and so in that whole time it was just a real depressing time and it was just a real like you know downer time and this was probably the first person i've 
I had well actually that's not true. Yeah, at that time it would be had been the first person that I had would have known with HIV, um, or you know even at the time thinking that they might have have gotten HIV. Um, and at that time I wasn't really educated about it as much, um, but I knew what I knew, and I was not okay with um, this possibility. Like you, I mean nothing I can do about it, but whatever. So come to find out, he didn't have the virus. So. That just kind of like for me, that whole period of time of that week or week and some days um, of feeling, you know, the uncertainty, the the those emotions and just kind of being in that slump with my best friend. Um, and for him, it, it, it was a lot. And I just felt like that to me was my moment of when I realized that that's something that really no one should really go through because this disease is preventable, which is kind of the message now. Um so uh, when I got into high school, um, they had a peer education course. Uh, so uh, the Fresno County Health Department was offering um, um, a training, a week long training. And uh, um, I'm sure my phone to silence really quick. Um, a week long training and uh, we went to camp. We got trained how to be HIV educators um, to go into the classrooms at different high schools um, and teach the classes or that, you know, they usually have a week long of, of sex ed and in and, 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 what was it? Um, oh, I don't even know what the class is called. But anyhow, um, so we would have the, we would come in and have these conversations so that, you know, take the take the teacher out of the room and not out of the room, but take the teacher out of the element. So people hopefully would listen more to the peer educators. So we would do that. And um, ever since then, I've been involved with HIV prevention and education, um, not only in that regard. So once I got out of high school, um, it was, uh, I, I started working doing health education with a local nonprofit agency. Uh, we would do outreach. We would do street outreach to various populations, not just the gay community, um, but sex industry workers. We used to work uh, we used to work. Uh, we used to work Belmont. Um, we used to do um, outreach efforts, giving out condoms, lubes, and barriers to um, edu to to the sex industry workers, the prostitutes, um, call it what it is, um, and and make those relationships so that way they were protecting themselves because um, it was a thing and it still is a thing. But um, again, no one is immune to this, so that's why we were you know pretty much giving. Um, um, protection to everybody. In addition to that, we would work with, or I would work with, we would work with, our team would work with um, intravenous drug users at the needle exchange, um, giving new, uh, you know, not new needles, like we weren't do the needle, actual needle exchange, but like the cleaning products, the bleach to clean the needles, and so hopefully they would be able to eliminate the risk that way. Um, and, um, at the time, the people of color population, and not to say it's not now, but at the time, the people of color population was under, uh, you know, there were infection rates were going really higher too, so the people of color contract. Um, and so that effort began, and, and um, after that, I started working in the um, prisons um, doing HIV prevention work um, in one level, and then at the other prison, I was doing what was a course called Healthy, uh, Healthy Relationships. Um, and it was actually um, because the Chowchilla prison was a the medical prison for the women and a lot of the women or some of the women were going into prison finding out they had HIV and having to deal with that within a confined space and um, you know not really knowing people and not really knowing who you can trust and so it was just more like a safe place for them to be able to go and um, you know how do I deal with this how do I tell people how do I cope with this how do I all this information um and we would give that info i would give that information to them i was their case manager um i would run their courses i would run their classes with them um i would do things of that nature um with them and um you know all the time still pushing this message of hiv prevention education um on my own terms um here um at the time you know my space was big or um you know um working with world aids day um also i've been on and been on different committees um i've served on a national committee for it was a youth for hope um uh, i was selected um to be part of this committee it was two people um, I think it was two people from each region um, that were selected that were representatives of the youth. And this is, of course, when I was a youth. I'm not a youth it, um, gray, uh, age bracket anymore, but um, before I was 25 at some point. 
Um, and we, they flew us out to Washington, D.C. That was the first time I've ever been to D.C. Um, and they, you know, another week long training, um, they got information about how our communities are dealing with it, how, what other things that we think would be appropriate, um, you know, for teaching this information, for spreading the message. Um, and then also after, shortly after that, when that one, um, was over i also served on the um state board or state uh, national or not national states um community planning group which was specifically about msm and uh what it did was brought various msm doing hiv prevention work within uh california together i think it was about i think it was quarterly uh we met and it was just kind of like what's working what's not working it was a planning committee um for hiv prevention so i you know i've always been heavily involved and it's never been about views or likes or or people getting to like me and what i uh, you know, people recently, well, with the Grand Marshall thing, a lot of people got to read all the stuff that I do or have done. And um, people were like, well, we didn't know you do all this. And well, I, I just didn't. It wasn't something it wasn't a bragging. Right. It was just something um, that I did. And um, I felt I needed to do <laughs> obligatory, um, you know, and sometimes I was getting paid for it. I'm not going to sit here and say that I was just doing it on my free time. Um, in some cases, it was a, a job. And in some cases, it wasn't um, like now. Now, um, now it's a whole different situation. So flash forward to today. Um, and um, the reason why for me right now, this whole HIV prevention education is very, very important. And, um, it, you know, I'm still pushing the information as much as I can on my own terms um, without not getting paid for it, without uh, not having an agency behind me or not, any, you know, just me feeling an obligatory for myself is because um, in the last six months, from June of 2013 to June 2014, I have in, found out about six new infections amongst people that I know, um, personal friends, um, and um, um, that's heavy and it's a lot, um, especially because this disease is, is preventable. Um, and I've also, uh, you know, since people have heard, you know, my efforts, um, I've learned about other people being positive that I know um, and it's 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 a big issue for me it's a, it's a big problem for me that people especially young people are still becoming infected with this virus because it's preventable and all it takes you know even if it is just a condom and even if it is not hooking up even if it is um, you know not doing uh, whatever I don't I don't know I don't have the answer I just I feel like condoms is the easiest way to prevent it. Condom is the most um, accessible way to prevent it. Um, and I think, you know, being condoms being used in the situations that I have heard, you know, would have prevented, could have prevented everyone that had, that I know have gotten it, getting it. Um, so I, it, to me, it's just, it's a bigger thing. Um, and, you know, HIV cases are still on the rise. I don't understand why that is. We know how to prevent it. We know how to, 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 uh, we know, we know what we need to be doing, but we're just not doing it. Um, and I don't, I don't include me in that because I am doing it. Um, but I, I feel like it's a, it's a bigger thing. It's beyond me. It's beyond the Exotica show. It's beyond uh, me trying to get uh, people to click on a video um, or share my video to get likes or, or to get views it's a bigger thing. It, the the videos is just a platform. I feel obligatory. I feel obligated because it is a, a, it is a platform that we do have. And if we don't use it, then shame on us. I feel, you know, and another thing is, you know, people try to get, you know, pull, make, you know, blanket statements about what we are doing or what we're not doing to help the community. Well, we are, me, I'm doing. I'm doing what I can to help the community. And for anyone to question why or who that or or is it enough or whatever, that's baloney. <laughs> it's baloney. It's, it's fucking bullshit. Is what it is. But we'll go with baloney um, because I'm doing what I can in the way I feel necessary. And um, I just feel like you know, I, it's it, it's not, it's a bigger thing. It's a bigger. It's bigger than just fucking use protection. I, you know, I, I just, I don't understand it. I just, 
<sighs> I and I'm running out of time, but I wanted to wrap this whole thing up. And um, you know, I don't care. You know, the the stigma. I'm sure people. I don't have HIV. I get tested. I know my status. Um, but I feel it's a, a something that's affecting our community. So, fucking use a condom. And if you don't like it, don't watch our videos. So nasty. And that's what happened. So